Hi, everyone. My name is Candace Craw Goldman. This is the Quantum Healing with Candace show. And this show is sponsored by Greg Prescott at InfoD.com. Thanks so much for making this show possible, Greg. Earlier this morning, I did a show with my good friend Allison Coe. And we had hoped to stream it live to YouTube. And it didn't work out that way, some technical difficulties. YouTube decided to have a need for a new processor, uh, right as, I guess, apparently, <laughs> I was streaming the show from our Zoom webinar over to YouTube Live. And so our apologies for all of you YouTube fans who missed Allison Live when we all thought that that's exactly where she was going to be, too. So our apologies. We did get the show recorded, and I'm processing it now on another computer, and we're going to put it up as soon as I can put all of these clips together. For those of you who registered for the Zoom webinar, please know that more than 400 of you registered, but we only had spots available for 100. We took as many questions as we could, but there was hundreds and hundreds of questions, and we just couldn't get to them all. But I want to thank you so much for your interest in this work, in the event, in supporting quantum, quantum healers around the world, and really for being who you are, the light in this world that's bringing something wonderful like the event to our planet. Thank you. Now we join our show already in progress. The people on YouTube will just have to see us a little bit later. So there we go. I wanted to just tell you that hundreds of people emailed me before today and sent in all kinds of questions. And those of you who are actually here on the webinar, please look down, if you've not been on Zoom before, look down for the Q&A box and put your question in the Q&A box. There's also a chat feature. And over in the chat is more of a, hi, how you doing? And, and seeing other people, you know, sign on, etc. That's the chat feature. It will not um, be a place where I'm going to pick up questions, okay? Uh, it's too difficult. It goes by too quickly. There's so many of you here. We're not going to look at the chat for your questions. So find the, the question and answer box. And that's where you should put your questions. And there's already seven of them. On oh, the I see. Yeah, I see the difference. There's yeah. chat. And then yeah. it's wonderful. It's hard to keep track of them. Yes. Everybody saying yes. hi. Hey, hi. And how's my volume now, everybody? Is that better? I see. It looks like it's better. Okay. Okay. Okay, were, good. Were they saying it was a little tough to hear you? Yeah, yeah, just a little low, but I think this will work. Okay, wonderful. So yeah, well, let's start asking some questions, shall we? Or, or I'll let you lead. But <laughs> that's okay. I know you're excited about this because we talked about possibly doing this last time we got together for a show, and we just talked the whole time, and yeah. we, we didn't get to that part because they were supposed to talk about. Um, so we wanted to do just a brief update if there was one. <clears throat> And we wanted then to have this whole session together, this whole show together by answering or, uh, you know, focused on answering questions. So we're absolutely going to do that. Uh, I want to start out just with a couple of pieces of information. Number one, forgive my voice. <laughs> I've been going through what a lot of people call Ascension Flu, some really interesting information about how um, and this is my third bout of this since last year, but this one coming on pretty strong. There's some interesting information out there now about how and why this is happening to a lot of people, particularly light workers, people, healers in this field at this time. So I'm in good company, even though I'm not at my best, uh, I, I actually have a voice. So forgive me for my Kleenex, for my tea and anything like that. Um, uh, as we go forth. The second thing I wanted to talk about just briefly is um, my own uh, sessions since the last time we've had the show, there's been some minor information or brief times that the event has come up and through in my own sessions, but almost all of my sessions have had to do with timeline collapse and timeline mm. shifts. And mm -hmm. particularly, and I mentioned this to you just briefly before the show, Allison, but I think our viewers might be interested in hearing this part. So for those of you who don't know me, I assisted Dolores Cannon for many years, and I've been doing this work for a decade. And just, oh gosh, I'm getting goosebumps just starting to think about saying what I'm going to say. Control yourself. No, I'm just saying. <laughs> Which is in this last week, I had not one, not two, but three really amazing lucid dreams 
concerning Dolores. And, and in all three of these dreams, I stepped into her classroom. Now, I assisted Dolores from 2008 to 2014. So I was in many, many classes with her over all those years. But when I stepped into the, the classroom to, um, you know, during these classes with Dolores, I stepped through in this way. First off, I knew what date it was, meaning I knew what class it was. I even knew what year it was. Uh, and I'll tell you why in a moment. And I was stepping in as that person did at that time, but with the memory and the understanding and the comprehension and, and the, um, you know, the experience of the time that's passed since. So let me tell you about the three dates. Uh, the three dates were um, 2008, my very first class with Dolores, uh, 2011, this is the class that was filmed or videotaped that is now her online class, that mm -hmm. class, and then her very last class. And in all three of these classes, I step in and I'm going, okay, this is weird because I know what date this is. I know what's going on here, but I also know it's 2018 and I'm having a dream and why am I here? And the really, really interesting thing was there wasn't a whole lot that happened past there that I want to even get into right now, except for this. Dolores Cannon's eyes and my eyes going like, Whoa. like, what a do trip. You, do you see what I mean about time and timeline cl collapse and aspects kind of collapsing like that and being able to navigate time in that way. And then some of my other clients have had that more of a time thing. Um, but, uh, that's all I wanted to say today about my own sessions doing the QHHT and the Beyond Quantum Healing work. Um, but now let's just take questions, shall we? Right. That is fascinating, though. Yes. Yeah. All right. So um, here's actually a really, really um, basic question. But I think it's an important one. And that is why all the discrepancies? Why all the discrepancies between the quantum healing sessions that are happening over, you know, over the planet and perhaps maybe most of your sessions or some other people's sessions. What, how, how do you explain that? To me, I guess, I guess the, the, the immediate explanation is the, the individual experience. Um, each individual is on their own level and each individual may experience something different. Even in my, in, even in my own sessions, they say that there will be a split between people who can handle this stuff and people who can't handle this stuff. And even the ones who can handle this event, when I say this stuff, I mean like this energy coming in. And even the ones who, who can't handle it, um, no, even the ones who can handle it and are on the ground floor when the wave comes, there will be discrepancies between how they experience it as well. And so um, I had one client who came in and was like, yes, it's going to be this huge bright light, beautiful bright light, and she'll soak it in. And some people will experience this bright light. It's lasting for hours. Some, some will experience it lasting for minutes. And so even the time frame for for that that person gave was variable. And then she said, she was talking about her sister. This is just one example. She was talking about her sister, who's maybe a couple rungs uh, down the ladder of awakening from her. And uh, she said, the light will be less bright for her than it will be for others. And so, so that to me tells me that where you're at, what your level is, will will um, allow you to experience this light differently and then we have the whole you know some people will be <laughs> this is you don't have to believe everything i say that i'm just giving you information that comes through my sessions but we have the whole you know idea that people will be separated and some who can't handle the light because it will actually hurt them will be um off off on these ships and then when they're brought back down they will be at a um <clears throat> It will take them a while to catch up, if you will, with the others. And some will, won't even know that they were ever brought to these ships. They'll have to actually deal with that and like come to their own terms with it. You know, that this wasn't just a dream. This actually happened. And so, so I think it, it is on an individual level. And that's why there is a discrepancy. But then you have people who are like, yeah, this isn't going to happen anytime soon. You know, or it's not going to be this big solar flash. So, uh, you know, as far as that's concerned, uh, I have no answer, no answer for that. 
you know, it just, people get different information. All I can do, all I can do and all anybody can do is say, okay, what is, <laughs> what are the vast majority saying? That's why I use like data points. You know, I have so many data points all saying the same thing. And then I, you know, from a logical manner, I can look at that and say, oh, okay, that, <laughs> that could happen then. You know, if, if I take emotion out of it and just look at logic, then yes, that could happen. But truly, none of us really know. We're all just kind of waiting around to see what's going to happen. That, that's, that in a nutshell is what's going down. None of us truly know. Okay. And, and some of it's so fun, isn't it? Um, you know, some of my own guidance and, and hearing uh, <clears throat> from my own team says, that we are dreaming this into reality and some of the excitement that you all um you know in our webinar and those of you watching this youtube later which by the way i just got a piece of information in youtube just asked me to upgrade my streaming encoder <laughs> for this show right i mean i've done it before and it was fine on this computer but for this show uh, right beforehand, I'm asked to, and that, of course, we're not going to do that. So that explains Yeah, <laughs> that's what's happening. Yeah. Okay. So whatever. For those of you who are watching this later and why it wasn't live, now you know why and sorry about that. Yeah. So um, that's great. Uh, and then that kind of fits with almost all information that comes through quantum healing sessions, really. I mean, yeah. the big thing is the event, but there's other ones. So, um, so yeah, that, you know, because a lot of people, my very next question, you know, is, you know, on, on this list, and then I'm, now I'm going to go to the, the live questions is, you know, people are afraid about families being broken up. What do you talk to them about that and about young kids? Okay, so the stuff about young kids is I always hear this in sessions, and I think others hear this as well. They're more prepared than us to hold this light. They are way ahead of us. So just because they don't talk about it, or they're not you don't see maybe evidence that they're spiritually awake. These are beings who are ready to hold this light. Okay, family splitting up. You know, we're, when I talk about the event and this wave coming to earth, all of the information I get at this point is not saying that this is when a split occurs per se. This is just when, an, when a wave of energy comes to the earth and raises everybody up to their next level. To their next level so it's not saying a split will occur at that point um, I think the choice eventually will happen after the event you know when you get a choice to go to a different planet or to dimension hop if you will that keeps coming through sessions so I wouldn't worry too much about families being split up at this point that's not what this is about yeah yeah they do mention you know some people who aren't prepared who would be hurt by the light or taken off for a couple days then brought back down and that's a temporary thing and so so that should alleviate some fears and then also you have the you know the soul path stuff which is like hey everybody's on their own path everybody and you cannot control where they go what they signed up for you we are on a ride with people for just a temporary time they're in our lives and um that to me makes me appreciate everyone who's who's around me at this time, even if they're being jerks. <laughs> you know, you jerk, I love you, because <laughs> you you and I may not end up together at some point. So so this is not the time that I like the information that's coming through is that this is not the time when we're separated. If we do get separated, it's just for a temporary time uh, for because people can't handle the light that's coming in and then they're brought back down and it's our job, people who are able to handle the light and hold the light, it's our job to then help them, the ones that come back. Our job to start putting more light in them at that point. So hopefully that answers the questions. I think it does and I actually, um, one of our attendees, Liz Lee, asks about the children a little bit more. So if the child holds the light on the ground level and the parent goes up to a ship, you know, there, there could be te temporary separations in that way. But, you know, we answer as quantum healers, we answer this question a lot about children anyway. You have to remember that the soul energy that, you know, animates a child is as old or as wise as any other energy out there. Just because their earth years aren't advanced doesn't mean 
exactly like what you said. And many of the new children are are infinitely ready for this. It's those of us who've been around a little longer. Right. And, and, you know, if we're talking, if we do consider, you know, mothers being separated from, from infants and stuff like that, I, I haven't ever asked that specific question, but I do get information all the time that says nothing will be done to harm anybody. That is why there's, there are other beings around us to help us in this process that they're trying, they're trying to like protect everyone, everyone. And so I, I just, I don't know. It, it hasn't come through my sessions that anybody is going to be in any precarious positions unless they are a very negative being. And then, <laughs> and then it comes through that they're going, they're going to be recycled. Okay. Yeah, we, have, we have questions about that too, but, um, Here's an interesting one from, uh, I think her name is Danae, and Danae asks, Allison, have you too had these visions? Uh, personally, have you had any of the visions of the, the wave or the energy coming in? You know, I, I am not a, <laughs> I'm, not a, I'm not a vision person, and nor do I get, um, you know, nor am I uh, very good at visuals, even when I go into a hypnosis. What I get are knowings. I get big chunks of knowledge. And I also have um, this truth meter. So no, I haven't had any dreams, nor have I had any um, spontaneous visions, but I have had my own sessions, uh, my own quantum healing hypnosis sessions and, and beyond, beyond quantum healing. And, um, and definitely it does come through my sessions that a wave is coming. So, but I just consider that another data point that um, says the same thing. So I don't put any more credence into my session than I do into, you know, my client sessions. But yes, I don't, I don't, I'm not gifted in the visuals. <laughs> Sucks. Well, Allison and I are members of the same original quantum healing support forum community. And a lot of us get together and, and talk about that. And I talk about how our clients are, are talking about this. And, you know, it's a really great way of doing it. Thinking about yourself as a reporter and, and just yes. what this one says, and this is what this one says, and here's what happened in my session. But, uh, you know, who knows? I think it's one of the reasons we're here is to see what happens. Right. And I try to remain completely unbiased um, when doing this work and, and reporting on it and, and getting the information and not judging. Um, well, that would be unbiased, but completely st- standing in this point of not judging, not, not trying not to have an emotional response to all of this stuff, even though I do because <laughs> I too want it but but when I'm reporting it and when I'm gathering the information even when it's my own I try to completely stay unbiased that's a really great um that's a great way of looking at it I think most of uh, most of the quantum healers you know try to do that the same way so actually speaking of quantum healing uh, William asks am I or is Allison either one of us I guess a, a, licensed to teach QHHT? And the answer is no. But if you check us out on our forum, we, we are teaching beyond quantum healing, but there's only one person uh, alive now who can teach QHHT. But Dolores' videos are still out there. So anybody who's listening, who's interested in this work can uh, learn or, uh, you know, look, look up um, finding out about both of these courses. Okay. Yeah. And I'm just going to put this out there. I would be a terrible teacher. <laughs> I don't know. I suck at that stuff. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Well, you know, I don't know about that because you're teaching, you're, you are very good at disseminating information. So I'm going to take a little bit of exception to that. Oh, but, thank you. <laughs> but excellent. Okay. So I'm going to go back to another um, emailed question. Here's a really good one. Have you asked at all how long the actual wave that comes in will last? Yeah, I have asked, and that is, um, that is, I do get variable an- answers on that, but most of the data points for that one all say that it's going to be a couple hours, or, or at least it will lay people down for several hours, several hours, but that it won't ever leave necessarily. Like this energy is going to stay here and permeate the planet. But the, but the um, bulk of it, it hitting the planet and it, it kind of getting, ramping people up and allowing them to um, hold this energy and flooding the planet, that, that I, I get a lot of um, 
information that says it'll be a couple hours. But who knows? This is through this is through sessions through an entity that can't really <laughs> that lives outside of time. Yes. So we we do try to I do try to ask about that and try to ask can you gauge how long this will affect people? But they also say you know um, I've had I've had those sessions that say that the people are going to be off the ones who can't handle it will be off planet for a couple of days. So. If you if you just take that information and the other information, you could you kind of have this range. Okay, it could be from a couple hours to a couple days. That, yeah. So it it's uh, you can infer from that. Interesting. I actually asked something along the lines about because the, another another answer seems to be well, it's already coming in. You know, bits of it's already coming in. It's right. just a big And then I asked, well, how can we tell? And I got a really interesting answer one time, and it was, go outside and close your eyes and see if you, you know, while you're outside near the sun and see if you can see anything behind your closed eyelids while you're sitting in the sunlight. So I did that. And what I've actually seen, I don't know now, I've, I've never even said this out loud to really anybody except for the mm -hmm. client there. But... Um, I, I saw like, you know, kind of like maybe like a television or a video kind of screen waves like that goes down in waves. Mm. So I'm sitting out there looking or, you know, towards the sun with my eyelids closed. And anyway, that was, that was sort of like the idea that it might be, um, you know, hints of what's to come in yeah. a very minor way. Oh, that's exciting. <laughs> Isn't that fun? All right. Here's, um, okay. Here's an interesting question uh, by, <clears throat> um, hold on. Oh, I think we already answered that one. So sorry. Okay. Um, there's, this is a really interesting, I've not heard this one before. Good for you, Liam. Liam wants to know, what if you're underground? What if you're underground? <laughs> Will you feel or see it? I think it's a great question. That is a great question. Way to go, Liam. Uh, yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm sure that you will feel it, and I am sure that you will see it. By the way that it's described in these sessions, they are constantly like, yeah, no, there's no escaping this energy. Absolutely no escaping. And they're always like, it's going to permeate the earth. So even if you're underground, it's going to get you. <laughs> it's going to find you. Well, you know, I get a lot of questions in the comments of my videos from people who are like, okay, if it's coming in daytime in the Pacific Northwest, which is, which is um, I get a lot of that in my sessions, a lot of sessions saying, yeah, that could be daytime. Um, then it will be nighttime across the other side of the world. And what will we experience? Well, you're still going to be hit by this wave of energy and it will probably wake you up, I would imagine, because this is not lulling, sleepy time energy. It will pro you'll, you'll probably feel it coming, like this, this extreme vibration, I would imagine. Okay. But I haven't directly asked that question. It would be a fun question to ask, but I, I don't hijack my client session. So I need, I need a client to show up and ask that. You okay. know, actually, that brings me to a question about, you know, you were actually talking about numbers um, a little bit, you know, how many people have come, how many people have asked in their sessions about the event and how much agreement there has been. And so I wonder, like, has, has a preponderance of the sessions you've had lately had this as a topic of focus or what? Well, you know, it's always... It's always, all of my sessions are primarily on the individual's health and wellness, all of them. The, that individual seeking some level of relief. And then back maybe 25 questions down, generally, there'll be a question about whether or not they'll experience an event on earth or whether this is actually happening because we don't want, just want to assume, you know, oh yeah, this event's happening because that would be leading um, during the hypnosis, we don't just want to say, where will they be during this event? We want to say, is an event actually happening or, or as they've heard, um, or some, you know, some trying to, trying to ask the question without leading, without assuming that this is happening. Um, but no, you know, yes, there are questions, but always, always with each client, it's primarily about their health, wellness, their relief from, from situations that's, that's primary, always. Yeah, so um, 
<laughs> excuse me, Allison, how, how many clients then, the, ask, the question is asked specifically here by Julie, how many clients approximately have you had mention anything about the event or the new earth? You know, just in the last two months, I've had probably over 25, 25 clients who, who have either asked about it or it's been brought up spontaneously during their, during their sessions and then information has come through. So it is a huge amount. That to me is a huge amount. Uh, you know, that's just in two months. Yeah. So the other, um, beyond that, I would have to, um, estimate and I don't want to do that. Yeah. So, um, a colleague of ours, Julie Doré says, I've had several sessions where clients have been shown a more intense timeline than what Allison has been shown. Mm -hmm. Is how practitioners are being sent clients that are being shown the same timelines. I'm getting a little buzz on my body about that. Um, what do you think about that whole concept? Well, I, I don't really understand the, the, the so question would, too much. It would uh, be something like this. There's, there's, a, there's a preponderance, tell me if I'm wrong, of agreement for the, um, say, 25 people that have come in to, mm -hmm. to talk to you who've had sessions about the event plus your own session. And then what Julie is saying is, wow, she's had, she doesn't say how many, but she's had several clients come that the preponderance has a, even a bigger event. And there may be another practitioner over here whose people come in and, and they kind of shrug their shoulders and say, maybe it's a non-event or maybe it's really not going to be noticed by very many people. And so that's her question or her observation about how maybe uh, different practitioners are assisting different timelines, maybe. What do you think? Right. That? You know, I, I, I do agree that, um, I do believe that, that that can be a trend, obviously, because um, there's facts supporting that. Um, but also, when you just think about how consciousness affects an experiment, if you just look at the research done on that, we couldn't help. I couldn't help. And, it, and people will be all over this like crazy, probably, if I say this. But, but the, you know, just stating the facts here, we, we would have to assume that the consciousness of the of of the hypnotists, the consciousness of the of the human humans in this in in these hyp hypnosis sessions would affect the results. You just have to assume that if if the consciousness of scientists <laughs> are affecting the results of their experiments, then the consciousness of of the hypnotist would probably affect the the results of of the session. But that, that, and that is why we try our hardest, or at least I try my hardest in, in, these, in these sessions to keep my opinions out of it completely and to, to stay unbiased completely and to not lead. So, so I try my hardest to do those things because I do, I do believe that. And, and yeah, it, and it could be that, that different, different hypnotists or, you know, or, are getting a preponderance of clients who are on a certain timeline with that hypnotist. I was told in my own session that um, I'm amassing, <laughs> I'm amassing a tribe, if you will, and and and, and not in in not in any hierarchy level, but a you know a, a roundtable level, where where we're all moving together you know, to either to the next level or to the next earth together. And this, these are, these, this is my tribe. And I even put that on my website years ago. The, these clients are my tribe. These, these subscribers to my channel, they're my tribe, you know, and I, I think everybody, everybody is amassing their tribe right now. Absolutely. So, so maybe that, maybe that has to do with the timelines, but I, I do think it's, I do think it's important to consider that people are getting different information and to not, to not disregard it just because it doesn't match mine, um, because it's not mine. It's my client's information, and and um, and I think it's it's wonderful to include all of this information and to try to look at it all. There's a lot of people saying how excited they are in the questions. They're not even really saying so excited. 
Yes. <laughs> yeah. um, the excitement level. Are the proponents of your clients and your subscribers and the people who contact you excited as well? Or are some, are some people not so much? Yeah, you know, they're, they're excited for the new and so ready to leave the old. They're, they're just so done. You know, that, that is a theme that I get. And I'm not sure if you get that same theme from people. They're just so done that, that, and that's represented in that kind of boredom, you know, that not really, you know, interested in, in regurgitating all of the, all of the spiritual stuff that's out there that all says the same thing. You know, they're just done. They're done with the junk. They're done with the manipulation. They're done with all of the systems that are failing. They're done with their fellow humans or, who remain asleep. They're just done. And, and yes, and on the flip side, they're so goddamn excited. They're so <laughs> excited. They're so excited. And, and I have to say, I'm, I'm, I'm very much the same. I, you know, I can't even hardly watch any spiritual stuff anymore. Yeah. Um, sometimes, you know, people send me links in my comments and I'll follow them and see if, see if it's interesting. And, and most of the time it is. And, and I just posted some of those in my, in my video, but, um, I can't, I don't look at, I don't go searching hardly anymore. I just watch dog rescue videos at night. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, I absolutely love it. You know, in my own, in my own session, Dolores said, that this excitement that a lot of you are talking about is part of the thing that is helping manifest this. This excitement is, we're part of the creation of this. So keeping that excitement level is great. I 100% agree with that. Actually, if you, if you just look at the law of attraction and like the stuff, um, you know, the Abraham Hicks stuff, that is part of the equation is that excitement actually brings the stuff quicker to you. You want to be excited. It's okay to have one foot in both worlds, you know, being like, yeah, that's old, but look how exciting this new is. It's coming. That, that actually is, is a huge part of the manifestation of it. So there's been a lot of questions submitted. I'm, you know, I'm trying to make some of these general because the, there's just no way we're going to get to all these questions. Right. There's hundreds and hundreds of them. But here's a really interesting one. It's been asked in several different ways. Will we be able to communicate with those who've, passed on once you know once we're into the new earth or once the wave has stopped uh, you know or, or finished coming in will we be able to talk to people who've already you know um left their physical forms i have received a couple um a couple answers on that because um uh some of my clients who have passed who have asked about that specifically and they said that not everybody will have that gift but, but many will, it will be enhanced in many. And so, it, so it, it's along the lines of, of right now, if you look at humans, some have certain psychic gifts that are um, more innate than others or more enhanced than others. And, um, and on the new earth or where, wherever you go after you ascend, certain gifts might still be more enhanced in others. And, and kind of, um, how do I say this the right way? They say that certain people will be able to have that gift and others, others just won't. Mm -hmm. and, but, it, but it will be more widely available than it is now. So uh, anyway, that, that's what comes through my sessions. In the, and, and not enough people have asked that question. But, but I do find it, find it amazing that, yes, it, no matter what, our abilities are growing. But we might just be growing down a trajectory that we're already heading, you know. For certain people, it might be, in, it's probably still individual. That's a great way of putting it. Somebody else was also asking, what if those people who'd passed weren't very spiritually um, advanced, meaning, you know, they were maybe less than, uh, you know, uh, light focused when they passed. Does that change whether or not they can be contacted? after It, the it doesn't seem to. I mean, if you just look at now, it doesn't seem to change. It doesn't seem to have any effect now. And, you know, we're all playing a role down here as well. So we can't, <laughs> we cannot base our assumptions on their spirituality, on the way the, their actions here, because they're playing a role. We, I, I hear that all the time in these sessions, especially from people who have had 
such a hard time with individuals in their life and, and who have passed. And then they ask about those individuals from the higher self and the higher self is like, yeah, they're actually a very advanced being. <laughs> they, they signed up. They're so advanced. They signed up to be a real jerk, a real piece of work over here because they were advanced enough to be able to do that. And it really, it really kind of shifts your perspective on who these kind of assholes are that <laughs> are down here. Sorry, I'm not supposed to cuss. And that's not because of the platform. I was given that in my own, <laughs> my own from my higher self. They were like, yeah, you got to stop cussing. And so, so that's not for everybody. That's for me. They were saying, you have to release more of your 3D personality. So they were like, don't drink anymore and don't cuss anymore I'm like what? <laughs> oh my god okay so that's that's why I say that I'm not supposed to cuss because I'm not <laughs> you know in my own session that I had with Dolores in 2008 as the demo subject in her class my higher self focused on the concept of after death communication I mean Ooh. it was it was the number one thing I was supposed to focus on. I had no idea I would be ending up doing what I'm doing right now, which is kind of that. But my own ability to sort of tap into those beyond the veil is, is increasing gently and has been for, for a while. So I think that's really right. Fun. Right. And that, that's unique to you and other people who have, uh, who have um, a different psychic gifts their abilities are increasing right now as well as these tendrils of energy are hitting the earth. So they're ramping up. So certain people are highly empathic, though that will increase. Certain people are um, highly intuitive and they're getting readings that they've never gotten before from people. They're able to get them like that, even from, from non-physical you know, um, communication. So just from, from a text, from an email, they're picking up way more and so so yes that this stuff is ramping up for everybody i think it is um kimberly sent in this question and she's also here live and she she asked this question in a nice way <laughs> it's just a lovely way that she, it's not a bad question it's a great question she actually asks with all the information coming to you and the longevity in this field of study, how do you look at all the connected dots and breadcrumb trails and keep an objective mind? How do you not throw the baby out with the bathwater? How well, <laughs> you know, you try to keep an objective mind, but how do you do that? I think it's a great question. Well, I always ask myself, what would Spock do? <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, I love it. I you might say Dolores, but no Spock. Oh, I what thought would Spock do? Yeah, what would he do with all of this information? No, I, I, it's just, um, it's in my nature to already be able to, to do that, to stay objective and to not have an emotional response to this information. So it's already in my nature to do that. And then <laughs> I was raised on Star Trek and, uh, and I love Spock and he, he's like, you know, uh, when, when emotion becomes too unbearable, then you, then it, a logic is a really, really warm place to go. It's a wonderful place to go. And I, and logic is what helps me out a lot in this work because I do hear so much information and sometimes it conflicts. And so that's how we, how, how I can handle it is to separate it logically into data points just just like that just just as a researcher would and and that really helps me because i do get a, an emotional response really quick that's the ego when i get information from like people saying oh well this person says this or this person says that and it completely conflicts with what i get and i'm like oh well, that can't be right and then and then immediately i switch over to logic well, okay, that's just a reference point, and we'll see how many of those compared to how many of these, you know, and that's all you can do, or that's, that's where I find, find uh, my comfort zone. So I'm also a double Virgo, so I'm super highly logical anyway, and I was, <laughs> I would, when I did my, um, when I did my, this is just an aside, but when I did my, uh, like a, 
aptitude test for going into college and stuff? What, what would I be best at? They, <laughs> I was told I should be a mathematician. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, no, I'm not going to do that. But, but that, so that is where, that is my strength and my, my ability. So. Dolores is like that too. She called herself a reporter. And if you read her books carefully, she'll start some chapters out by saying, and then I had this client who had a completely different viewpoint of it. So, you know, it, that's a good way, good way of, of putting it. So a lot of people are asking this question about evil. Does evil survive? And what about people like criminals in the jail system or people, uh, you know, religious or political leaders who've committed atrocities? What will happen to them after the event? And also ETs who may be walking amongst us. Uh, what happens to all these uh, beings after the event? Okay, so, so oh God, sorry, there's a squirrel fight going on. <laughs> <laughs> out my window. I just saw one plunge to its death. Not, not really, it was just 10 feet. Okay, so um, negative, uh, as it comes through these sessions, anybody who is so negatively aligned they will be sent away. They can't handle this light. They cannot handle the light that's going to be flooding the earth. And so they will be removed from the earth. Um, I have heard from during my sessions, it, uh, they referred to it as recycling. They will be recycled. But I've also heard that they will just be sent to a planet that they match. They won't be a match anymore for here. Also, the negativity is going to be removed from the people who can hold the light. That comes through my sessions as well. Multiple sessions have said that. So, so the people that remain here, they will have their negativity removed. They won't be, and they said, in the sessions, they said that that's going to be really weird for people to not be able to fall back on this habitual habit of thinking negative thoughts and having resentments and holding on to that. It would be a totally different way of being. Um, as far as the ETs go, I, I do get a lot of information that says that they're, they are here, of course, and, um, and, and that there will be, they will be known to us. And the time frame for that is variable. Um, it's, they say within the next several years. So, so that could be the next day or, you know, 700 and something day, 800 and something days down the road, 900 days down the road. Because they say, you know, one to three years, they will be known to us. They will, so disclosure is coming. You know, the ones that are here and have been here and the ones that, you know, are, are out in the skies. So, so that is something that says that um, comes through my sessions is saying that this will happen. You know, back to the families thing and being split up and who goes and who doesn't, who's recycled and whatever, any of that means. <clears throat> it occurs to me as you were talking, maybe because also people are asking, what can we do? How can we assist or whatever? Well, how about this too? The people that you know maybe aren't fully, you know, thinking in a light filled way right now, see them thinking that way see them acting that way because when you do that you actually assist them right so you know rather than pitting them or reacting against them or sending them darkness if they send in darkness your way see them light filled see right. see what their contribution is because they very well may be a catalyst in helping this stuff move along you know we've had more than one person suggest that's what the whole trump thing is all about yeah, I think I, 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 I am not going to open up that Pandora's box, but, but I do agree. I do agree. Controlling your thoughts about a thing is, is the, the number one thing you can do to affect someone. And it's, it's just simply that controlling your thoughts about that person and switching the narrative that's in your head about that jerk that cut you off or that that jerk that lives with you or that jerk who teaches your kid, changing that narrative in your head is huge. That spreads more light. That comes through so many sessions, like start controlling yourselves. You know, that, that, is, <laughs> that is one of the number one things you can do is control your thoughts about a thing, control the narrative that's going on in your head. That's something, like I said, when I get those egoic hits immediately, you know, like, oh, you know, that, yeah, that can't be whatever, you know, whatever information they're getting, that sucks because it goes against what I'm getting. No, I immediately have to take that switch and be like, 
oh yeah, that could be just as valid. <laughs> Why couldn't that be valid? You know, that can be just as valid as what I'm getting. So I have to do a lot of that. You know, I've been doing that for, that was actually the, one of the first steps I took to awakening was starting to control my thoughts. And that is a magical portal that you go through once you're able to do that. Yeah. <clears throat> so, um, a webinar attendee named Jeff says, hello, Candace and Allison. I love hearing your updates. I've had feelings this is true or real, but I'm not experiencing much myself. He did a QHHT session last week, but was unable to connect, see any past life. Uh, Visualize, didn't only really see black. Is this common? Do you have a way to play, uh, break through the block? Is it frustrating for me and makes me question the reality of all this hype? I, I, yeah, I would, I would be frustrated too. And I would definitely question it as well. That it would be a natural reaction. Um, you know, I would have to talk to you on an individual level about your experience to, to, um, to kind of put it in perspective. I always, before the, before I help with the, before we go into the hypnosis, I always do a whole spiel with the client about, you know, if you see black, that doesn't mean you're not somewhere. And we go through like, you know, it just means there's an absence of visible light. And so what could that be? You have to, you have to check in with your other senses. And um, anyway, so, so it would be a wonderful conversation to have because, but your first instinct is always, <laughs> if I see black, this must not be working. Yeah. And so, and so it helps to get prepared beforehand to know that if you see black, it just means that these aren't working. <laughs> it's something else. It doesn't mean you're not somewhere. Like I've had, I've had uh, seeds, you know, like a client goes into like a seed. And so, so, and I've had them go into wombs. I've had them go into space. So it, like, there's a lot of black places you can go. It doesn't mean you're not somewhere, but, but, but yes, ultimately you left frustrated and I completely understand that. I would, I would too, if I was you. Yeah. Sure. And I would start questioning things, but. I've had clients who are blind. Oh, I've had that before too. Yeah. I mean, and they immediately go, I'm not seeing anything. This must not be working. And I would say, wait a second. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, yeah. Like, yeah, cause then you start asking about the other senses. Okay. Do you feel anything? Reach down. Do you feel your leg? Do you feel anything down there? Can you feel the ground? Can you feel a surface or around you? You know? It, it's fascinating the different uh, levels of information you can get. Yeah. And you're not always in a physical body either. You know, I've, I've had the right. great pleasure of doing this. I think 13 is how many sessions I've had in a decade. And I've had out of those 13 and I'm very visual. I'm an artist photographer. I came, you know, I was doing all of that before this. Uh, two, two of my own sessions had no visuals at all. And when the first one came where there was no visuals at all, I was like, huh, what's happening here? Because I'd already had like about nine or whatever that, you know, were like movies. And, I, and suddenly mm -hmm. there's like nothing there. And I'm like, well, this must be what it's like for a client. And, <clears throat> and then I, you know, so even internally, I'm like, well, then what do you say to a client? And it was actually easy to find the story. It was easy mm -hmm. to figure it out once I got over nothing's happening. Yeah. So yeah, but I don't want to disregard, you know, Jeff's experience and, um, you know, so, so I would have to hear more about that to, yeah, sure. to help him. But, but also, you know, with regards to not getting any hits that this energy is coming, um, that's something that, uh, you know, would be frustrating as well, but don't disregard dreams. You know, some people who don't get, you know, awake, awake signs, they get dreams that are spot on. You know what I'm getting a preponderance of right now, Candice, is that, um, okay, so, so it reminds me of the dreams that people had that they reported after 9-11. So after 9-11, you have all of these people come out of the woodwork and say, you know, I had, I actually had dreams about this and I disregarded them. But they, but they were powerful. I had dreams about two planes hitting the buildings or two missiles hitting the buildings, all this stuff, and people running for their lives. And it was in New York or in a major city. I get dreams sent to me all of the time. And I, I really um, put a lot of credence into, into dreams. Um, just because that, that's how I, um, before I was ever doing this work, I would do dream interpretation. 
because they, they are, that is your direct line to the higher self. When the ego is asleep, the higher self is finally like, Ugh, here's all this information. You've been talking all day long and I finally have to give you all this information. And for some people, their dreams are precognitive. That is their, that is their skill. And they are getting tons of dreams about this light. And, and so when they hear my session, then when they hear my videos, they're like, wait, this reminds me of a dream I had three years ago. This reminds me of a dream I had last week. This reminds me, I saw the same exact thing. So there, there are people who are having these precognitive dreams about this event. Mm -hmm. Exactly the way I've described it. Okay. That's great. Yes. How does a double Virgo end up being a dream interpreter? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Virgos, their ruling planet is Mercury. Mercury uh, and Mercury is kind of like this knowing, this, this ability to have an antenna on your head that has this knowing. So that's how I get my information is from knowing. And so basically when I look at dreams, I can see patterns the same way that I can see them in my sessions. And I also just get a knowing of what it means. And then the longer you know an individual, you can see how it, how it aligns with their life how this dream is, is just a symbol for this aspect of their life. It's actually, it's actually fascinating. I, I love it. And it's a, it's a game. Um, but it's also me making sure that I rebalance the hemispheres of my brain. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's something I, I choose to do. <laughs> yeah. So those of you out there, pay attention to your dreams. Your dreams always are communication. My father tells me all the time, oh, they're crazy. They don't mean anything. I'm like, oh, really? Tell me your last one. And it almost always is e easy to figure it out um, for me and my dad anyway. It's not always easy. And, and dream symbolism stuff is interesting to look at, but it's your own personal symbolism and other things that, that you really need to pay attention to. But right. don't disregard your dreams, even if they seem funny or uh, they don't make sense. Pay attention to them always. Mine have been so freaking vivid lately. Just this past week, they have been out of sight out of sight. And um, before that, they were touch and go for months because I wasn't in the regular practice of writing them down. I'm still not. I'm, I still am not. But my higher self is like, fool, you better pay attention. <laughs> 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 They're like, man, you little fool, you, you have some messages in here. Um, and so I've been trying to pay attention to them lately because sometimes I just need a damn break, man. <laughs> Sure you do. Yeah. And sometimes it really, sometimes dreams are take out the trash dreams. And you know, yeah. as I say that a garbage truck just drove by my studio. Oh, wow. this is the way life works people. Okay. I'd have to tell you this dream. I dreamed of a friend of mine whose husband passed away about 15, 16 years ago. I dreamed about her. I dreamed about him. So he'd passed and we were in the Wizard of Oz. Yes, and I do live in Kansas. And yes, yes, my name is Candace. <laughs> and anyway, so um, we were at the place where, you know, where like the road converges. The scarecrow is there and does this. Yes. And, um, in this dream, uh, my friend and I were standing right there and her children were here. And the husband, who's the deceased one, came over here. And, and she was having trouble connecting with him, which is why we were all doing this together with me in the dream in Kansas on the yellow brick road. But he was saying to her that what I was talking about in the new earth and the event was a real thing. And the road that went one way was golden and the bright, vivid, vivid colors. And then the other road was the black and white or the muted colors. Mm -hmm. And that whole thing about Wizard of Oz, if you go back and watch that movie, that, you know, a lot of that symbolism. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's a dream that I had. So. That's a powerful dream. Holy crap. And that, that, you know, that comes, that came through sessions as well. Um, you know, if you, if you just look at those, look at those paths, um, what came through sessions two weeks ago or a week and a half ago at several times. So several different sessions was the, the split has already happened um, because I was asking, you know, what do we need to do to prepare more people and stuff? Or this client was asking that. And so I was asking it for her, what do we need to do to prepare more people? No, the, 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 it's already done. The separation is already done. Um, 
these people are, are not anyway. So, so it's like they've taken that road and the other ones have taken this road and now it's just a waiting game, yeah. but that, that's already happened, which I find fascinating. Here's a question from uh, Leanna. I think I'm saying it right. Has Allison or clients experienced vertigo or falling feelings? I've heard that channelers say this is what the event will feel like being dropped. No, no, uh, none of them have, but I, I don't invalidate, you know, what, what others have experienced, but I, I have to say that's never come up in any of my sessions, at least not in the last three or four months that I can remember. Um, and certainly none of them have described it that way as a falling feeling. Um, but that, that, I think that's a, that is a kind of great way to, to describe it. You know, I can, I can, it's like that. <laughs> I can, when you, when you say that I can get the feeling, um, but no, I've never heard it described that way in my own sessions, but that doesn't mean it's not true. Um, so here's another question uh, from an anonymous attendee. Is there any more information about the waves? For example, could these waves of energy be experienced by uh, many right now as working, um, as pulling out emotional wounds, old baggage to bring them out of the surface, et cetera, to be dealt with and allow space within the cells in our body to make the shift possibly easier for us? I'll quickly say, yeah, that's what yeah. mucus is. <laughs> and yeah. so going on right here. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, that it, that is the effect of of these waves already coming. That at least the the um, tendrils, the fingers of these waves already hitting the earth. It is to get you prepared to hold more light. And what do you need to do to hold more light? You got to get rid of all your junk. You know, whether that's dietary stuff or emotional stuff, you got to get rid of all that stuff. So it's coming up to the surface. And that that actually is my dreams. Um, the ones that I've been having lately that are so vivid have all been showing me kind of that my junk that I've kind of like pressed down and don't want to look at because it's uncomfortable. And so they're showing me, you know, certain interrelationship things with, with certain individuals and stuff. And, and so I have to not disregard that, you know, if that will allow me, if healing that and getting rid of it will allow me to hold more light, then that's what I need to do. And so, yes, that, that is absolutely accurate. The answer is yes. <laughs> Sorry. In some of my own sessions, <clears throat> it's also been suggested that some of this is for ancestral reasons. For example, some of what's going on with me and here right now, and it's been going on since Lionsgate of August of last year, <clears throat> is um, in my maternal ancestral line, my, my maternal grandmother actually died at the tender age of 24 from tuberculosis. Oh. And I've been shown that some of what I'm going through right now is healing this memory and this carry through my ancestral line by actually, you know, releasing it. Oh, I see. So you're having, you're having a physical manifestation of this release coming through you. Yeah, that's, that is huge. That is huge. And you know, what's so weird is, I mean, I was the person up until last year, I was the person who watched everyone else get sick. <laughs> kind of said, you know, <clears throat> oh, that just doesn't happen to me. And, you know, this is, you know, like I said, third time for me. <clears throat> All right. Um, um, let's see. Let's get another one right here. Um, let's see. Well, that's, we've already asked that one. Um, okay. Actually, can you let Allison know that Lisa Harrison is interested in doing an interview with her and I sent her an email of interest at late. Here's the YouTube link. Yes, you are, um, you are hitting the airwaves all over the place, mm -hmm. making the big time. Did, did you get that email? I guess. Hey Lisa. Yeah. I'm super <laughs> duper uber behind in my emails. There's actually like three weeks of emails that I was even told to ignore. <laughs> Oh, it's terrible. I shouldn't even say this. They're like, act as if they didn't happen. Yours is in there and I don't want to ignore it. And, um, and nor do I want to ignore anyway, anyone's because being that Virgo means that I, I like to get stuff done and I hate any loose ends. So it's super uncomfortable to do this. Um, but I'm trying to respond to all the recent emails. But Lisa, I was actually told to do your show from my higher self. Wow. I was actually told that. And I, and uh, there were, so, so I, please email me again. <laughs> I love it. 
I love it. Really, really fun information to. Uh, it yeah. was so random. Yeah, it was so random to get that. Yeah, do Lisa's show. It's like, what? Okay. I guess I, I will not cuss and I'll do Lisa's show. All right. You can cuss on my show just fine. <laughs> I don't know what else to. Okay. No. Here's, here's a question from Aaron. Has any information come through about how this shift or the event, I guess, would affect our pets? And could the sudden popularity of veganism be a precursor to people waking up? Okay, so, so yeah, I, I do get a lot of information about pets because people, people ask about it. Um, and I get everything from, from pets, you know, they will be, you'll be able to communicate with them more after this energy, um, that some of them will, will decide to shift in a way when, when that time comes. Um, like I had one client who, who asked about her pets and, and it said, the higher self said, yeah, but they might not even look the same way. They might decide to shift bodies after when, when, when that time comes, when they're allowed to. Um, but they're not, they're not necessarily leaving planet right away or anything, just like the humans aren't. Um, they will be cared for. They're beings too. And, they, and I do get a lot of, of this. Uh, they're enlightened beings and they chose to come here too because a, a lot of us were just trying to find an inn to the planet, like the, the first ticket into, onto the planet who, that was going to experience this because this is such a huge thing. And, um, and so some of those tickets were through, <laughs> through these animal bodies, you know, like how can I get in? Uh, anyway, it's, it's fascinating information, but yeah, pets, pets are still going to be around and they might, they'll upgrade as well. So because all of us are going to the next level. So whatever level we're at, we will be raised beyond. So, um, and then the veganism thing is interesting because, um, you know, I, <laughs> I'm mostly vegan. I do eat a little shaved Parmesan every day because I, it's like crack cocaine. I love it. Um, but definitely uh, my diet has like five ingredients in it basically. And that's by choice because uh, that feels good to me. And I've been, I've been this way for years. And I thought, Oh, when I start doing this, these sessions, I can't wait because they're going to tell everybody to be vegan. And no, <laughs> that didn't happen. That was another one of those things of just being like unbiased and non-judgmental because, you know, I want everybody to be vegan. That, that, that is certainly, I, I love that. But that's not what every, that is not helpful to everybody. That's not the diet that's, that fits for their body, their metabolism. And, um, and, and I pay attention to that. So, um, so yeah. it, it is the whole veganism thing is interesting, but I, I do think it, um, we definitely hear that it raises a vibration for people and definitely raises the vibration of, of, um, of the earth because you're not, you know, you're not, you're not, uh, just because of the factory farming and stuff, uh, you're not being involved with that, but there are ways of, of, <laughs> I get, I always get, you know, people on my tip for saying this, but there are ways to get high vibration um, meat. And um, the higher self recommends that for certain people. Diet is so individual. Diet is so individual. Absolutely. I love that about your ticket in. And I, I might mention myself that um, for people who have had uh, lost babies and maybe even had, you know, miscarriages and very, very young children leave, that often that's the information that comes as well, that, that just being here, even if they never even left the womb of their mother, being here at this time, physical on the planet, is an expansion and being, getting mm. a ticket in. Um, and it's, it's something to think about. Mm, fascinating. Yeah, it, it's amazing. Yeah, <laughs> some really great things um, come out of these sessions, you know, where there's some great, great pain and... Um, you know, there's something at least seems positive about it. So some people are asking about the Bible correlations here, you know, the rapture, et cetera. What do you have to say about that? You know, that, that actually, um, I, I get clients, some of my clients are, are um, not only just extremely spiritual, but uh, they also are very religious, believe it or not. And, um, or they've, they've, they have that past and so they ask a lot about the Bible. And um, I, look, I personally look at the Bible as just another reference point. 
you know, just another data point. I don't have any, you know, I, I was raised uh, in a very Christian environment and I'm very not religious, but I don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. You know, it, to me, the, those are reference points, data points. And, um, but the information that comes through these sessions is interesting because <laughs> People are, you know, you don't have to believe this. So I'm just going to say this. Um, the, they say that a lot of this information, it's just they're trying to get it to the earth in whatever way that people will accept it. So if people are very religious, they're going to get it into, into them through um, like miracles and stuff like uh, Fatima and stuff like that. Um, the, these kind of miracles, uh, Catholic miracles or, or, you know, Christian miracles that are, that are um, hitting the earth right now and have been the last couple decades. And so they're saying this is, this is basically, they're just trying to get this information in any, in any way possible. So they'll, the same information will come through in a different way through, through how that person, where, how that person is vibrating. So I know I could have said that better. But <laughs> I think you said that just fine. <laughs> but it's a kind of like, go ahead. Uh, Shakespeare's, you know, uh, you know, the rose by any other name is still a rose. It's like this information is, is appearing in any way it can all over the earth, that something big is happening. And so I don't disregard it, you know, but I'm also not a fanatic and, um, and, yeah. and our, 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 high, our team speaks to us in, in language and in cultural uh, idiom and, and phrases and the way that it can, you know, right. the way that you have that, that's like your, your own experience. So, yeah. Like, and, and, and it's specifically coming to the earth to prepare people to prepare people. That's why this information is coming to the earth. And so they don't want to leave whole cultures or whole religions out of this preparation by any means. All right. I'm going to ask a completely different question here in a moment, but I'm going to answer this question because people are asking about questions being skipped over. There are hundreds of questions in front of me, <laughs> hundreds, hundreds. And I'm doing the best I can to uh, sort of see the ones that maybe weren't talk talked about before or to combine some or to ask some specific ones. I would love to do this again with Allison. Maybe she, she would do this again with me sometime in the near future, but we're not going to get to everybody's question. It's just no way possible. We've already been doing this an hour and 10. And Ooh. I still have a voice, but you let me know what, you know, how you're doing. Um, I can still talk. We can still keep going. Yeah, I'm still fine. Excellent. Um, so another quantum healing practitioner, Akash, is asking us, do we have any information about the, econo um, the economy or the monetary system? Any information pertaining to cryptocurrency? Are they you here know, today? Uh, What's going okay. on? Okay. I don't get enough questions about that. I, I do think it's an interesting topic, and I know tons of people are interested in it. Um, I get more higher perspective questions. Um, information coming through, like the fact that eventually we'll, we won't need a currency and we won't need an economy that will not, we are going beyond that. But um, the very few clients who do ask about that, they always said that the crypto, that the, the currency, the revaluation of the currency will happen after the event. That yes, it's all of the groundwork has been laid and there are yeah. hundreds and thousands of people who have, you know, spent their whole lives working on this stuff or spent a huge chunk of their lives working on this stuff and made huge sacrifices to, to help the shift come along. But then, but then on the other side, this energy is, is the final push to allow for that to happen. That comes through sessions um, whenever anybody asks about it. So pretty much all interesting. So it won't happen before it'll happen afterwards. Hmm. Yes. But they also say that this is so imminent, you know, those same sessions are saying this is so, so imminent, like soon, <laughs> of course, it's so soon. <laughs> always, yeah, it's soon, that wonderful soon. You know, actually this morning I was sitting and meditating about all of this and the, um, the image I got was, I don't know if y'all have seen those hoses out there now, you can get these hoses, like garden hoses, and they're, they're, they're hardly anything, but when water goes through them, then they get bigger and they, they fill up with oh. water. 
they, they go their full length and then when the water goes out they kind of come all the way up like that and that was the image I got from my team to explain why or how that this thing that uh, from a higher beings perspective may seem a contained solid uh, single thing maybe on another level a physical level um, you know a much more long and drawn out thing and yet it's the same thing yeah you know I, I think that's great imagery and certainly um, through these sessions I get a lot of you know how how long will it take this client to acclimate to the energies yeah. So even if these energies are only, you know, the bulk of them take like a week or take three days or take a couple hours to hit the earth and to saturate it, how long will it take that client to acclimate to the energies? And that is actually very much on an individual level. Um, so some clients, it was like, oh, it will take her six months to acclimate to these energies. And as if she's read the manual, you know, that uh, I put that in one of my most recent videos. And, um, and then other clients, it was like, they're going to be a first responder. They will, be, they will hit the ground running. And so it's very interesting to see how long the, each client or each individual will, um, will take to acclimate to these, to these energies hitting the earth. It's fascinating. Just like that hose, like you showed, it's like it, it, can, it can be long and drawn out or it can be quick. It can be instant. So it's, it's completely individual. One of the emailed questions asked, will any light workers or healers stay with the recycled or the, the others who are on the old earth to try to assist them? No, it, it, they don't say, uh, so that's, that's assuming that, um, you know, and, and I'm not saying you're assuming this, but that, that question is assuming that um, <clears throat> the recycled people stay on this earth. Because we're not talking about moving to a new earth yet. That's not that that we're not talking about that when we're talking about this event. Um, that that seems to take a while um, to, or at least through these sessions, that's what it's implying that that this energy will hit this earth, and then eventually, yes, a new earth exists and multiple new earths exist. But you will have the choice to go to those new earths at some point. But we're talking about this earth. Now, the beings who are going to be recycled are going off planet. They are not going to be on this earth. That's the information that's coming through these sessions. And so those are two separate things. And so, no, I haven't ever received information that light workers were going where those recycled people are going. No, because they're not a match for that. They're a match to stay here, hold the light, and anybody who needs their help, the, that's who they will be helping on this current earth. So here's a question for me. I'm thinking, have you ever asked the idea of the recycled um, beings? <clears throat> do they retain individuality or what do we know about their recycling process or what happens there? You know, I haven't, I haven't asked that. I think it, I think it is a fascinating subject, but uh, no, I haven't we haven't gone into detail in that in any of my sessions. And I'm wondering if anybody, anybody besides me has that, that would be fascinating bits of information. Um, Cause I, I get that sometimes they're going to a planet that they're matched to a different 3d planet that they're matched to because this planet won't be 3d anymore. That's why they won't be matched to this, but there are other 3d planets that they would be matched to. And then sometimes it says, in, in different sessions, it says they'll just be going back to source and then, and then, and that's what they mean by recycled, going back to source and then reincarnated. So, so it, it could be either or, I guess. Right? I know. I'm, I'm very curious about that one. That's what I would ask if given the opportunity. I have not yet myself either. Um, Lynetta asks, how many dimensions are evolved in the event? Third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh? Have you asked that question? No, no, I haven't asked that question. It was just um, the information that comes through is saying that this event is coming to this earth that is also going to be transitioning. And so it raises everybody up to their next level. And then beyond that, beyond that, eventually you can go into the higher dimensions. If you're a match for the higher dimensions, eventually you can make that choice. That's the information that comes through not necessarily uh yeah i don't get anything that says like this is a eight 
eighth dimension or seventh dimension stuff. It's more like we're all going to the next level for us. I've heard um, in some of my own sessions that <clears throat> some of the cosmic differences are, are affecting all of the planets in the system. It's not just Earth, um, yeah. et cetera. So, yeah, I mean, so there's that anyway. It's not just an Earth-based thing, but as far as dimensions, I guess there's different ways of thinking about that. Yeah, it, it, yeah, that, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> I'm not trying to poo poo the question at all. It's just, I refuse to answer questions that I don't have enough information Why? on, right? Yeah, no and so, so if I'm just trying to quickly scan all of my sessions, it's, that doesn't come through. Like, it doesn't come through like that. Shelly asks, I've noticed some of my friends and myself having a hard time meditating these days. Is this because of the energies? Oh, I would, I would assume so. I mean, it, yeah, I would assume so. I think a lot of people are feeling kind of like this kind of franticness right now. I, I, I know I am and I'm a huge meditator and I, I can't for the life of me stop, drop and meditate re lately. And I know I should, and I can't seem to get back to the gym and I know I should. Um, and so I'm, I'm not dissipating all of this energy. And it's like, that's almost always the first thing to go when, when, when the body is feeling stressed and, and it's picking up on these energies, what are the first things that we get rid of? <laughs> They're usually the most helpful things, like meditation, like going to the gym or creativity. And this energy needs to be dissipated. And so I, I feel you. It is hard to meditate, but that's probably the best thing that we can do right now. Some form of getting this energy out. So whether that's a physical form or whether that's a meditative energetic form or whether that's a creativity or journaling or anything or even talking, just get it out. Just start dissipating this energy. So, but yeah, it is, it has been hard to do stuff like that lately because I can feel it, you know, and I'm not a big, I think, I think it's been established. I'm not a big feeling person. <laughs> <laughs> I made myself do some restorative yoga yesterday because I'm finding it difficult to slow down and stop too. I mean, yeah. work and all of the interest, of course, of all this stuff coming up right now um, during this very significant month. But um, yoga, that that's yoga session really helped me. So, um, so maybe. Yeah, massively yeah. helpful. Yeah. All right. Here's a really interesting one. Um, Jean Ann asks, has anyone mentioned a pink sphere or rainbow frequency coming up? Uh, they don't really call it rainbow frequency, but they do mention that the energy is like, seems like a rainbow coming to the earth, a wall of rainbow light. I even heard it described and this was beautiful. I love this. Um, and that it was all shimmery and it looked like a bubble you were blowing up. You know, you know how that kind of oil slick kind of look to it with all the rainbow colors in there. And so, so not described different, they didn't use the term frequency, but yes, rainbow energy, same as frequency. Um, and then the, the pink, I haven't heard that, but you know, I do think it's interesting. I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but I'm sure you have. Yes, iridescent. That was the perfect word, um, iridescent. Uh, and shimmery and rainbow colored. Sorry, I just saw that pop up on the chat really quick. I'm not watching the chat, but every once in a while it catches my eye and <laughs> scan down. Um, uh, but the, uh, the skies are different right now. The colors in the skies, the clouds, all of that stuff is different right now. Even from the ISS space station, you know, the International Space Station, their feed on the earth has been showing different lights different colors on the earth and then also um uh i saw some videos i think it was oh god I'm secure team or something like that really cool website and I, that probably wasn't it no a really cool youtube channel they were showing videos that people have taken in the middle of the night say two in the morning they're driving down the road and they take a video because oh my god the sky is orange <laughs> it should be black it's orange so we actually asked about this in a session last week and the answer was fascinating because I was like, is that evidence of, you know, these energies hitting the earth? 
you know, and they were like, no, what that is, is, is a sign that the, that the earth herself of her preparation for accepting these energies, just like the humans are preparing, the, it's the earth preparing to accept these energies. It's the earth's process. And, and so those are what the lights that you're seeing right now around the earth and the changing of the atmosphere to accept these energies. I was like, ooh, man, this is ramping up. This is so cool. This is so cool. The, cloud, the clouds here in, in Portland have just been freaking beautiful, amazing, like glowing in a different way, you know? Have you yeah. noticed any of that? Oh, gosh, I'm a big sky watcher, and I have noticed that. Um, very much so, very much so. And different sort of cloud formations and cloud shapes and, and, and movements. Yeah. But yeah, I think that the, it reminds me of, again, the, the technicolor, you know, aspect of the Wizard of Oz kind of thing, and which right. is why that's, that imagery keeps coming, coming through as well. Um, and just like, it, just like in that movie, you know, when they, all of a sudden it's light, you know, they go from, from black and white to light, and the, the song, the music changes and everything. Um, they, they say that through these sessions. I get a lot of that, that the... Our, the color schemes will change here. Our ability to see different color, it will, everything will be brighter and different once this, after this energy happens. Now, I'm not assuming that everything is correct that I hear, you know, I'm just like, once again, just is just data, but I think that's a fascinating, fascinating bit of information. I, I hope for that. <laughs> Of course, because it's exciting. And I know that a couple of my own dreams, I've had dreams and I'm looking at something, I'm like, that's a color that I know that I have never seen before. And unless you've seen a color, how do you know you've never seen it before? And then when I wake up, I remember the dream that I was looking at a color I've never seen before, but I'm back in my physical, so I can't even imagine what that is. Like, I can't oh, remember. Oh, what, what a is. trip. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so, that so cool. that so okay here's a question from Stephen who wants to know have you noticed that any naysayers about the event coming up generally come from channelers any thoughts on non-humans wanting to delay the event or that even some good ETs don't want us fully awake naysayers non-humans wanting to delay and even some good ETs don't want us fully awake well, I think all possibilities exist, um, in my opinion, uh, just from doing this work that has been verified that all, <laughs> and I have to stay in that, that state of recognition that all possibilities could exist. And so, um, uh, I, but I do get information from these sessions that no one is able to delay this energy. No one. That, that's not a possibility anymore. This energy is coming through. Now, that's what I get in my sessions. Don't hold me to that. I'm just reporting it. <laughs> um, but certainly there are, there are positive ETs. There are negative ETs. There are positive people. There are negative people. Um, and I'm sure they don't want this change. So, so yeah, that, that can happen. So this question's been asked before, but it's, it's one that people still want to know. They want to know, you know, what's, what kind of 3D stuff's going to shift, be gone, or whatever. Um, this person um, asks about um, people leaving their jobs, feeling due less to 3D responsibility. Will we need to work, especially jobs we don't like? Um, and, and people in hospitals, you know, will they still be there? Will we still need hospitals? Those kinds of 3D questions. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I think all, all of the major systems, we get information that all of the major systems are going to be changing. Um, you know, government, healthcare, education, um, it's social services, uh, you know, the, the war machine, all of that stuff is going to be changing because of this energy. You can see all of these systems breaking down. And so it, it, I think it may be that all of them will start up in a different way, not necessarily the war machine, but governments may, may start up a different way. Healthcare may start up a different way or start changing um, because we see the old systems breaking down, but we don't see the new systems yet starting up. And so I think that's why so many people will uh, choose to stay here 
and help and um, and change change this world for the better. But yes, anything that you see that's not based on on love and the compassion for others and empathy and the actual helping of others, any system that you see like that that exists now will be changing. Very good. <clears throat> so here's some questions. I'm going to try to kind of combine some because really there's so many and, and we adore the fact that you all are so interested in this. <laughs> there's just so many questions. There's no way to get to all of them. <laughs> no way. <clears throat> here's Thank you, Candace, for doing this. I know oh, you don't feel so good. Fun. I love it. This is what I live for. Um, Terry asks, are the solar winds that are cutting through the cracks in the magnetosphere part of this event? But let's try to answer all of that together. So the solar winds, magnetosphere, but people want to know about electromagnetic storms and the electric power grid. Can you kind of answer all of that combined? Yeah, you know, some, that information comes through from the sun, you know, and from, from the, the normal reactions of the sun and the earth. Um, and we're, what we get from about this event and the energy coming through for this event is that it's a portal from the galactic sun. So this energy is coming from the galactic sun. And then I even heard that it's a portal coming from the galactic sun and then it will shoot through our sun and hit the earth. Now, um, I, d I don't believe the two are super interrelated. Um, the normal reactions of earth, the normal magnetic changes of the earth, the pole shifts, all that stuff. I don't think they're super related to this energy coming but you can definitely feel the stuff ramping up. So I don't get enough information about, about just the natural reactions of the sun and the earth to, to comment too much about them. Okay, <clears throat> here's a couple questions about our physical bodies. Uh, will we still die when we're 5D? And um, Shubham asks, I have a question about the looks. Are we going to look the same after the change? Any increase in height or skin color or change? Anything like that? What's going to do to what we look like? And if we die? Oh, man. <laughs> um, I, I get a lot of information that um, says that, that eventually we'll be able to control whether or not we die whether or not we, we decide to transition out of our bodies or whether or not we decide to just leave them completely and go to, to a higher dimension. Um, it, it is so hard to, to answer that any, any one way, answer that any question any one way. I do get a lot of information that says that once we're 5D, we can, you know, we will hold light differently. And so our bodies will appear younger and more youthful. Then when we go to these other dimensions, if we dimension hop and go to higher dimensions after, after leaving this earth, we can start manipulating more of our, our, um, our physical appearance as well as our, you know, our, our outer environment and stuff. And so, so it seems that that's the trend where we're going, that we have more control over not only our physical looks and our physical appearance, but how our energy, how long our energy stays in our body. But I do think, you know, when we stay on this earth, <sighs> I, I actually shouldn't continue with that. Um, Cause I was going to say, I do think if we stay on this earth, that death is a part of this earth, but then I get, you know, that's, that's also, you know, whatever. So right. I get it. I don't, I, I don't get enough information either way to say positively one thing about that. So just to kind of continue on with the physicality thing, Sean asks, um, how would someone who is currently dealing with some substantial health issues and a, a variety of physical ailments, <clears throat> if physical death is imminent before the event, how would they experience it compared to their healthy counterparts and light, perker, light workers' purpose in that case, if that makes any sense? I guess, you know, I, I kind of understand that question. You know, they're here to help with the shift, but they may themselves physically pass right before it happens. Good yeah. God, I hope not. And I really hope not. I, I so hope not. But, um, Okay, so I get a lot of information that this, this energy is very healing. It's very healing to the, 
to the body and to the mind. And so when, when, and this, you don't, you can choose not to believe this or believe this. It's, you know, it's just information um, that, that people will start to heal because of this light. This light is healing. And so if they're on earth, they will get a huge dose of healing themselves. I, healing is a spectrum though. So I don't know what all it will heal. And so, but then if they're off earth, you know, say if they go to these ships and they come back to earth, it will be, they will be able to start being healed by the people who have held on to the light. Those become the healers. They're able to send that light into bodies and help heal them. That's the information that comes through. But anything personal about healing would have to be asked on an individual level in a session. Very good. <clears throat> and I hate to do this, but I've got a session myself coming up pretty soon. So not just quite yet, just knowing that we're going to be wrapping it up here pretty quickly with just a few more questions. Um, Leona asks, will people be able to move to get home or will they just lay down on the ground where they are like a knockout? And this <laughs> This interesting one, will life around them go on? You know, I keep imagining I'm walking out to my horse barn and boom, there I go, hit the ground and, you know, do my horses still walk around? I wonder what, what might happen with the rest of life around. You know, it, 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 the information that comes through says every being on this earth is going to feel this. So even if like, if I'm here at my home and my daughter is at school, She's, life is not going to be going on as it was for her. She's going to experience some of what I'm experiencing. You know, I, um, we, will, we will all be kind of laid down by this energy. That's what comes through these sessions. Um, hopefully that's true. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully life does not just go on um, around us because that would be the assumption that not everybody is experiencing this. And, and what, what comes through these sessions is that, no, everybody and every being is going to experience this on earth. Perfect. Um, that's just, that's so exciting. I get very excited when you talk about this stuff too. I'm, I'm not immune. I'm, I'm the biggest fan about all of this and I'm very, very excited about it. <clears throat> yeah, you know, I've had some interesting um, sessions that have focused on the sun. Um, the sun itself as a being, the sun itself that is kind of as ascending through all of this as well, that the sun is, is ascending. Ooh, and, that's cool. Yeah. Um, I, I have some um, session clips. I keep, I've been meaning to share them for a while. I just stay so busy. Uh, you know, you know this. It's tough keeping up with all the yeah. communication and everything. Um, you know. <clears throat> and that, but that makes sense, Candice because anything touched by this energy would be affected by it. And even if you just go with what came through my sessions as like, there's a portal coming from the galactic sun and it's shooting through our sun into earth, then yeah, the sun would be completely affected by it. So that's cool, but I don't get enough information or enough questions about the sun to be able to, to answer that question or anything about it. But um, that's really cool. You get information about that. Um, yeah. Um, so um there's, there's some information about that. In, excuse me, I picked it up. But I did a Patricia Corey who did the new Syrian Re revelations. Um, after oh. my session, she talks a little bit about that, about the sun um, and, and some of that going on. So that's another interesting, um, interesting way of looking at it. I love this, this question so much. Um, this next one. <clears throat> There's a question about the wave, this wave of energy that's coming in. Is it at all connected to BQH and QHHT sessions, the healing part of it that's going through them? And what I love so much about that is my own um, crystal river thing has morphed into this thing where source sends a beam of light energy to the sun and then the sun then sends it to the client and then that's part of you know, in the BQH sessions, this is, you know, when the healing team comes in and, and a lot of physical healing comes in. So somebody actually asked that, you know, is this the same kind of energy? And what would you think about that? Sounds great to me. <laughs> I think a lot of us are inclined to tap into this energy that's coming in. We feel it, we feel it coming. And I don't think we realize how powerful it actually is going to be once it hits, but we have a taste of it. 
right now and we're able to to actually tap into that little bit of it. And so many of us who work with energy are, are inclined to do that, to tap into this, these hints that are coming to the earth right now. So, ooh, I love this stuff. I love hearing, I love, I love getting as much information as possible and hearing people's experiences and, and gathering all the data. I love this shit, it's so good. It is oh my fun. God. It is fun. Actually, Kim asked, can you recommend any more books or more insight about what's happening, where we are and where we're going? I've got a suggestion in a moment, but I'm gonna let you start with an answer. God, I got nothing. I have no recommendations because, you know, yes, the ancients knew about the cyclical stuff and that, that, that does show up in like the Kali Yuga and stuff. But, you know, the, even information from two months ago is old yeah. as far as I'm concerned. And, and um, I, I can't for the life of me be interested in any books right now. That's just my own personal thing because I feel like this stuff is so new, like the, and not the event stuff, but the, the information that's coming through is so on the cutting edge. We've never, we've never been here before. And, and so I don't have anything to recommend at this point. I really don't. And that's indicative of just where we're at and where we're facing. Actually, assuming that um, it, it holds off for a little bit, um, I've got a little bit of an announcement. There isn't even anything to point to yet, except for the fact that we've been talking about it. On the community of quantum healers that Allison and I both belong to, hundreds of quantum healers across the planet, you can find them at quantumhealingpractitioners.com. But we've started a discussion, an idea that was uh, submitted, and, and we're going to be doing this now. And it's going to be a... Um, a connected and um, um, a group event happening all across the planet of a group regression online and in person, quantum healing practitioners of all kinds all around the planet doing group regressions or group meditations or group journeys, however you want to look at it, all on a single day at the same time. And we're going to do a small version of this with our beta BQH class actually Wednesday of this week, day after tomorrow. We're going to already start and see kind of what, where it takes us. If we, we're going to focus on how can we find out more information about the event. But assuming it all hasn't come to pass quite yet into April, um, that's the day we're going to do it. We're actually going to do this. I thought I thought about you as we were picking this date, just because of your, your uh, historical background. Um, but we're going to pick Dolores Cannon's birthday this year, which oh, happens yeah. April 15th, which is historically tax day, but it falls <laughs> on a Sunday this year. Perfect. So we are going to watch our, um, watch the quantum healing and beyond YouTube uh, site, watch our um, quantum healing and beyond Facebook page, um, you know, contact us about all that. But we're going to have practitioners uh, all across the planet um, hold these events. Some are going to do them live. Some are going to do them online and, um, and invite people to participate in that way. And maybe if we all focus or think about it or, uh, you know, have a same intention at the same time during the same 24 hour period, um, we can maybe proactively assist some of what's going on on this planet. What do you think of that idea? You, you know, that's true. You know, that's true. That focus, that intent and that grid that you're putting around the planet would actually enhance and speed up this energy because it i mean if it, if you just look at manifestation that's what you need and so that is awesome that is so exciting i want to be a part of that i hope i can depending on um the hours of it but you check that, your schedule because um i'm happy to do a duo thing like this if it works for you or help you set up a solo thing if it doesn't or just let me know how you can, um, you know, you can participate on yeah. that. or before just letting your community know about this um, would be, would be great. But it's also so a way cool. for people who are so excited about this and have that little bit of that anxious energy. I think it's going to be beneficial in a lot of ways. Number one, you know, a place to sort of sit back and, and kind of off, offset some of that, but also to focus, like you just said, uh-oh. We have lost 
<laughs> we have lost Allison. And I, you know, I was just about ready to shut it down anyway. So once again, the computer's kind of doing it for me. There was somebody out there who said they were actually seeing this live on YouTube. I hadn't seen it come up yet. I don't know exactly know if it has or not. But, but for those of you who have stayed with us today, I want to thank you so much. I'm going to Thank Allison as well, uh, it, whether or not she pops back in or not. Um, she's an amazing guest to have and a, a wonderful friend. And if y'all can go see her for a session, you know, certainly go do that. Um, for those of you who are interested in Beyond Quantum Healing, we are still <clears throat> offering the beta version of that class for members of our community. You can check out our website, quantumhealingpractitioners.com, to find out about that. Pretty affordable to do during the beta class. Um, you know, for members of our community. I want to take this opportunity to thank Greg Prescott of N5D.com who has sponsored this show now for three years. Greg, you are a dear and I love you so much and thank you for making this information, etc., available. So I just, <laughs> I just got a, um, a text from Allison that her computer died and I'm going to tell her it's all right. <laughs> And that I'm signing off anyway. And um, thank you all so much for being here. And um, here, signing off. And we'll see you next time. Okay. Bye-bye for now.